Shalom, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you everyone. I have a, so this is not really a, a chutbah or a sermon or anything. But I had a kind of a, an understanding or a question that I wanted to know about. I got the answer. And then I went out and I wanted to ask people, which I did. Their definition, I wanted to say, what what is praying? What does it mean to pray? I asked some people and some said, well, they don't even pray. And I was like, well, really? Well, what is your understanding of it? I would ask those that say they don't really pray or anything. I said, well, what is your understanding of it? And they say things like, oh, we ask for guidance. Or asking for things, for help, these type of things. It's like, okay. So I'm asking you as well. What do you think the word prayer is? What does it, what is it? What do you do? What is it for? Why do you do it? What is it? Right? And then I asked him the other question. I said, what is your meaning or understanding of fasting? What is fasting? What's that about? Most people, they say, fasting is not to eat abstaining from food that's what they say so i ask you what's your understanding of fasting right and then i got a comment now this comment is what started my whole journey into this so i got a comment and somebody said something that I have to show, post it, maybe if I can find it, I'll post it here. And somebody said, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. I thought about that, and something inside my spirit, when I read this comment, something inside my spirit said, no, Jesus didn't pray. The way that, now listen, listen to me. The way that you and I pray or the understanding or the or what the religions of the world had taught you how, what is praying Jesus never did that stuff I can prove it as well Now now you're going to be shocked you're like what Jesus never prayed well you have to understand get your understanding of what is prayer what is fasting what are these things If you don't know the true meaning of these things then how can you go around saying that Jesus practiced such things that you don't even know what they mean? So the greatest example, now, we have to also understand that when scribes are writing, they're writing words like Jesus prayed. And they add these words. Now you have to understand, these are words that not, not, you have to understand what words are in the context of what they're trying to describe. Words are used for description and communication of something, right? That's all words are. So if you read in Luke, for instance, I believe it's Luke 11, verse 1. It states that Jesus was praying in, in a certain place. Now, these things are very important to understand. When it specifically says, in a certain place, and then Jesus was praying. And when he was done, the disciples came to him and they asked him, Lord... Now, you have to understand something here. So, if there's the law of Moses and there was the... Because you know Moses was before Jesus, right? You understand? 
So they had rituals and offerings and sacrifices and sheep and doves and all these type of things. Right? You understand this. All this was going on before even Jesus was born. All those activities, what we would call religious activities, were all going on. All of a sudden, a group of men come up to Jesus. And these were supposed to be what they, they so-called, Jew, now Jew, like I teach people, that they weren't Jews. There's no such thing as a Jew back in those days. That didn't exist. They were following Mosaic or Abrahamic law. No. To get the understanding, that's why I wanted to bring forth the context of it more into it. So these guys are coming to Jesus, whom were of Israel, Israelite blood. They were of Israel. They knew of Moses. They knew of the temple command. They knew about paying taxes. They knew all of the living attributes of life itself in the city. Yet they were in a certain place. And they came to Jesus and they said, what? What they asked Jesus? Teach us to pray? Well, wait a minute. So everything that these people were doing before was not praying. Think about that for a minute, everyone. Because why would why would you have to ask? Well, I, I ask you. What do you think prayer is? What do you think fasting is? So if Jesus is not doing that which is the common, right, which is common, what was he really doing? And is that real praying? See, in the context, you can get, you can get understanding of what Jesus was doing in that certain place. All right. Now, these people were wondering about it. Teach us how to do it. We want to know how to do it. When he was finished, they wanted to know how to do it. Not every religion has their ways of what they call praying. Right? Muslims stand up, kneel down, go down on the ground, come up, look left, look right, <laughs> bless me, bless me, all these different things. Catholics do the sign of the cross. Um, Protestants and then other people, they like to shake and jerk and lurch all over the place. Um, hoot and holler, speak in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Jesus bless me. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all these different things that they all do. And Jesus said something specific about those things. He said those are repetitious, reciting. The same thing is repetitious and it is not profitable. It's not profitable. It's not correct. Is what he basically is telling everyone of your religions today, what you're doing is not praying or fasting. How do we know? How do we know that, that what I'm saying is right? And how do we know that what, what we're talking about, how, do, how, do, how can we tell that this is truth? Well, let's go into that story. Where the disciples are asking them, asking Jesus, teach us to pray. And what does Jesus say? He says, when you pray, do it like this. Is it say it like this, do it like this, let it be like this? I'm not quite for certain. But I'm pretty sure in the context of what, because if you re understand what I'm going to say and the context, Jesus probably was saying, when you pray, do it like this. All right.
And the first thing he teaches them is say, our father. Now, what does that mean? Our father. That means there's many of us. We have one father. Ours. So he's letting them understand there is one God, our Father, and where he is at, who art in heaven, who dwells in heaven, holy is thy name. All right, so we have that understanding. He's teaching them, this is God, your Father who dwells in heaven, and holy is his name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's giving you a fore, uh, foretelling of what you want to happen in your living of your world that you are in. You want that will, the things that are in heaven, and the Father's will, you want that to be here on earth. You want the kingdom of heaven to come to earth. Understand that. So thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What's that mean? Give us this day our daily bread. Well, that is... When you wake up in the morning, all your life activities that is going to happen to you, that you're going to be involved in, is your daily bread. Is that what your work, that, that which will you will be doing, performing, speaking, saying, all of that is your daily bread. So who gives us our life upon awakening is our Father. So give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses so sometimes in the day of when our daily bread that we get we will be tempted um misled we will be attacked maybe Good and bad can happen. Let's just put it that way. Good and bad can happen. And it's your daily bread that is given to you. If you backslide or you fail to uh, perform your daily bread activity the way you're supposed to, you are asking for forgiveness so forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us or are indebted to us. So everyone in the waking of their life and their interactions, we come across different things. And some people do bad to other people. And sometimes it's you who does, does the bad to someone. Depending on the work of the Spirit of whatever handout you got upon your awakening of your day. Today I have a good thing within me. I'm going to be doing great, wonderful, good things. Tomorrow I have a different one that struggles with my good one and maybe we did something foul. So we ask God for forgiveness and we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. Lead us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from sin, from evil. So that is a, upon your awakening, Do you have the understanding of the spirit? Then
the very beginning upon it, you want to cast out any bad thing that maybe you're gifted today of a spirit that is going to be a trouble for your struggle. So you're going to say, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. So in that struggle, that jihad, you asking for the delivery throughout your daily bread of whatever temptation is going. So deliver us from the evil one, right? Four, and a lot of people don't uh, add this, but this is uh, what was in the ancient old old text. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. So it is God who controls everything. All things belong to him. So in the context of this, like I say, Jesus was never, Jesus has never, ah, ah, get down. Come on, man. Jesus never prayed the way that we pray, ever. And how do I know this? Is because if the Spirit of God dwells in Jesus, now, now this, we know that the Spirit is what gives the flesh its life. So if the very Spirit of the Father, because he has claimed, I and the Father are one. If that very Spirit of the Father is in Jesus, why would God, the Father, pray to his own self? Ah. Ah. So when people go around, they say, like, even for Muslims, if you dare try to say that Jesus was a Muslim, Jesus prayed like a Muslim. Or even when Christians go around saying Jesus prayed like Christians. And then they have that Cain and Abel argument. In steps me and I say, you're both foolish. Jesus doesn't pray to God like you fools do. First of all, he's sinless. Sinless. He doesn't need... Uh, to say, forgive me of my sins. He's not sinning. He is a guide for you. He's teaching you what you should be doing. Notice that everything that's in the prayer is work. It's work. It's being. It has. It's not, are oh, we going to ask God, God, I want to win the lottery or... Oh, Jesus, I need a, bless me with a good job. I need this job. None of those things are the praying. That's not praying. That's pain. That's lip service. It's lip service. How you go get a job? <laughs> you got to go get one. <laughs> you got to go get it. It's everything. You have to understand something. Everything is there. God has given everything to you. It's there. Sometimes you can't see it. But it's all there. When you become not blind and you see it, you go get it. You go get it. I can make food and put it all on a plate and put it in front of you. You have to eat it. You understand what I'm saying? So, when I, I just find it funny that when people say, Jesus prayed to God. No, he never, he, he worshipped God. He never prayed. He doesn't pray to himself. He worshipped because he's spirit. And he never asked God for Things like we, how we do. He never did that either. Because you have to understand, it's even documented that even while he was being crucified, he never called out. Even in the garden, when he is praying during right before he's being handed over, 
Notice what how how he is, what he's doing in that so-called praying. He's saying, if there isn't any other way, let it be. He's not going around asking God for things, not telling God what he wants or diswants. He is giving like the end of the prayer, all praise and glory are yours. All power and authority are yours. Everything that's happening in our daily bread is your doing. If it's possible, take from me this cup. If it's possible, but not my will, yours. Nothing you can do about it. He never cried out. Remember that. And then another example is when Lazarus is being raised from the dead. Look at what he is stating. So when he is asking God to raise Lazarus from the dead, he says something to the father that's very specific. He says, Father, I do not do this for my benefit. He's not acting in this manner or conducting himself like all these other people normally do in temple service. He says the reason is for their benefit. I'm asking, I'm doing, I'm performing this stuff here that's meaningless for their benefit but i know you always hear me see that's the difference between jesus praying and you praying look at all the all the things that people do prayer 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 and then they always complain my prayers not answered god doesn't love me my prayers not being answered have you ever wondered that maybe that's not praying? So all day long you blame God for something that is not even his, his issue. It's your issue. You're not praying. You recite. You do repetition. You pay lip service rather than what is prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. What did he do? He said, take forth your daily bread, go out with your daily bread, and make the best of it. Whatever you have been given in your daily activity that you could do, if you come across something that you can be good uh, servant for God in, then do it. If you have come across, a, let's say you're walking down the street and you see someone who is in need, do it. Give. Help them. It's in your power. Let's say you're the beggar and you can't get someone to help you. Would you like that? Knowing that people walking by who, who could help, but they don't. If everyone in the world were to do what their daily bread was, there would be no suffering and, and all this other type of stuff on the earth. There really wouldn't. So that is the understanding of to live. Live in the spirit. The Father desires those who worship him in spirit and truth. How do you worship God in spirit? Well, spirit is what animates your body. Your lips, what you say in, in, in your mind and all that, that, that. What's good? What good does that do, really? You know, religion has taught all of these type of nonsense things for money. You know, the praying that religions teach you, they profit off of that type of lie. This is why I, I'm not in religion. I don't like religion. They sell you beads to pray on, 
to do that which Jesus said don't do, recite repetitious things, they sell you things for that. Think about that for a minute. Oh, church, we need to get donations so that we can buy new pews that have softer kneelers. Think about that. Everything that you're doing in this so-called fourth of your acti activity of what you call praying isn't benefiting you, it's benefiting materialistic bullshit and money. Fact. Oh, masjid, we need to raise donations so that we can get new carpets. Maybe they're softer for us on our knees. So you could do what? Go and perform re repetitious bullshit on them? Who benefits from it? So Jesus was praying, it says he was in a certain place. That's got to mean something. So they're not at the synagogue. They're not at the church. They're not at the masjid. Where are they at? What is a certain place? This certain place is spiritual. You could be anywhere. With anyone. At any time. And that which you are performing or doing becomes the certain place. If you go and you look at these words that are written and you see the meaning and the roots of where they derive derive from, you have you come to that understanding that certain place is not meaning a build necessarily a build a certain place can be a metaphorical spiritual thing that he was in a certain state of mind. And when he had come out of that certain state of mind. The apostles asked them, teach us to be like that. Now, we don't know what he was doing because it doesn't even give you context of what he was doing in his prayer. All we know that he was in a certain place. It doesn't say he was on his knees. It doesn't say he was bowing down. It doesn't say any of that. So whatever he could, he, he could have been feeding people doing different things and in a manner of a you know when you go to your religion you have these things that you follow right you have the the beginning of your of your like most things last for an hour so you always have your beginning of what the imam or the priest or the reverend starts out doing then you have your midpoint and then you have your end and then you send the people away and you went to church or you went to masjid or you went to the temple and that was your prayer time. So what was Jesus' prayer in that manner? What was that? What was he doing? And you get that context. You get the context of what his what he, he teach, teach us to do this. How do we do this? And then you look at that, what he taught. And then you come, can understand what he was doing in his prayer at the certain place. All right? There's more to all of this. I can get really deep into it. And I'm I'm wanting to know even more about it myself. Because uh, this realization of understanding that what we have been doing is praying. is not praying. It's actually condemned by God. He doesn't like it. He even fact, he, he says, I hate your gathering together of your assemblies. I hate your burnt offerings. I hate your singing. I hate all of that. So you got to ask yourself, well, what is it that you like? What does God, what do you want, God? 
If you hate all of these so-called things that we have been performing as a religious ritual and repetition, and you despise it, what is it that you truly are seeking from us? So we can do it. Because if you love God, you'll feed his sheep. Feeding sheep is action, isn't it? Action. You got to do something. So, then you get into that fasting bit, like I taught you already. Fasting is not not eating. <laughs> fasting is abstaining from that which your sin is. Whatever you... you I... I, I, I I am feel like I am possessed by a spirit that is constantly making me do things. I don't want to do these things. They're against you, O Most High God. Stop doing it. I try and try and try and quit smoking. Stop doing it. Fast from it. Sometimes these are the only ways that you can get rid of these activities because life itself is an activity. The only way you can get rid of that which you are performing, even sin is a performance of something, right? So if you don't want to sin, it's which is a performance, you must fast from performing that deed. And the more you fast and pray to God the right way, look at that, look at that. Look at that struggle right there. The fasting and the praying is a great struggle within the temple. If you know what fasting and praying really is. And look look at, at it when if people were to understand the truth of fasting and praying, look at how quickly the world around us would actually change. Your own self would change. And that which we are performing in the world of our daily bread, look at how quickly it would all change for the better if people would understand what fasting and prayer was. Not the way that religions teach it, trying to profit off of you by teaching you lies, but knowing the truth of what fasting and praying is. Now, for me, I want to more, I want to, I'm, I am learning more about this right now. This is, this is my if you want to know what is Imam Mahadi doing, Imam Mahadi right now is learning. I am one, I am learning how to fast and pray the real way, the right way. That is what I am doing right now. And hopefully it will make me a, a, a better person, a greater person than what I am today in my understanding of, of what is fasting and praying. I don't know at all yet. Like I say, this is what God has given me now to learn. And it and it started because of this morning with that dream. I woke up. I had a, it was crazy. I was, it was freaky, man. Very weird. The dream was. Um, I didn't get into detail in the dream and I don't want to for sake of people that were in the dream. But let's just say that there was a a guy who was drinking beer and the guy tried to give offer me and I I I did not want any. Instead uh we had I think I believe it was pop. Um, um there was other, there was other weird things that were in it throughout the whole thing. Like what they were Teach like I don't know what was going on, but then upon the awakening of it, it was the the whole ideology of fasting and praying. So I I, I will add that in the beginning of this video. Uh, it was weird, and I woke up. It was like the clock said three fifty, but I had been laying in bed pondering this whole dream experience. It was so real. I was I was there. It was very weird. And the different people all around, different scenarios were in it. And I laid there for probably about an hour. So so this probably happened, maybe it happened between 2.40 
and three o'clock, but I sat in bed pondering till when I showed you what time it was. Um, and now I'm going to go back because um, I always think things are for a reason. Like everything that sticks out for me is something that I need to look and check on. So the time that I stamp showed you, I'm going to look that up and I usually like to uh, use Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in a manner of, okay, what is this? If it's three o'clock, three o'clock is going to be the chapter. So usually I like to use John. I've always used John. Um, I will use like John chapter three. And then the verse is usually the, the seconds on the clock that I will go to. Now, not always. This is just for me. This this is a pooling of me. I just, I have a a weird thing. Like, I wonder if that means something. But that wasn't the time that I, I woke from the dream. So the dream was happening re around 2.40 to 3 o'clock. And then from that time, I just laid in bed pondering for about 40 minutes before I finally, I was like, I, I got to get up and and because everything was running through my head, so I had I said I got to get up and record myself and what just took place. I want to record this so I remember it for a later day when I because God is telling me to teach teach people about praying and fasting. I want you to give a chutpah or a sermon or a teaching about this. This is important. Do this. And this was like in the very end of how I woke up. I was I was hearing the Most High God. He was there with me in this context and he was telling me i want you to do this do this do this and i'm like but i don't know about it i want i i want to know about it i want to know teach me teach me do it do this do this and we're like arguing in a manner inside my vision right about okay i will i will but i don't know about it you have to guide me and explain to me these things so i can do it so you get a greater context of my what what's going on with me in that morning like I say, it was early for me, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I had, I, I had gone to sleep late on top of it. And now I'm waking up early and that's like, oh man, I need to go to sleep. I need rest. But God is like, do this, do this. Don't forget. Don't forget. And I'm like, I woke up, I, I made the video so I would not forget and try to put everything in it that I could remember. So I decided to make this video today. And I have more to come. This is just the first bit of it. Because like I say, I am in, this is what Imam Mahdi, Al-Khadar, this is what Achaim, all the different names people give for me, Khalki, Maitreya. This is what I am uh, learning, actually, actually learning right now from the Most High God. So... It's, 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 ask God to guide me correctly. You know, say, God, I, you know, like if you want to know, like people say, well, pray for me, but I'm not, I can't say that because that's not prayer. Prayer is not, oh God, just like in your daily life, say, I want to know what this guy is going to learn. So God, you guide him. So make him be able to guide us right. Say it in that manner to God, like, you know, uh, so that way I can get a greater understanding of the truth about it all. Because like I said, this is new for me because I was, I was like you with, with, with prayer and fasting. I, I, that's what I thought prayer and fasting was myself, but I always thought, you know, how come God never answers my prayer and fasting? That just hurts my stomach. And this, this I'm doing worse to myself than good to myself. So how do I fix this? I must not be doing something right. And I learned, you're not. I'm like, oh man, now I'm going to learn about it. So I'm going to end this video when the more I learn about this stuff, I will reveal it slowly whenever I have enough information and, and I, I am becoming better. I will reveal these truths about praying and fasting as well. Um, so I looked, like I say, you can look all throughout the, the Jesus life and the, and all the scriptures. And there is nowhere where Jesus prayed like you and I did.
Just because a scribe says Jesus prayed, that doesn't mean that he was there doing what we do, nor what we call prayer. And then you have to under, remember always, understand Jesus, the spirit in Jesus is God. God does not pray to his own self. Jesus, the flesh, would worship. So that was another thing upon the awakening. I want to remind, uh, say this as well. When I was awakening, there was that understanding God was trying to explain to me. Prayer is worship. Worship me and it is praying to me in the manner that the word prayer should never be separate from worship. It's like God did not understand. You have, you have created this word prayer. And, and that does not exist. It's always been worship, not prayer. It was called worshiping. And how do you worship? You worship in spirit and truth. And with the spirit, it's that which animates your life. Right? So I'll get more into it. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you, everyone.